I think their skepticism is sort of borne out just from the year after year pattern of, of Musk talking about robo taxis being just around the corner. Now, there's been a lot of questions about just how reliable that technology is going to be coming from Tesla. There is a view among those in the sort of engineering community that the reason why the Waymo um, and Cruise products work is because they use LiDAR right now. I, I, you roll your eyes, but I'm just saying this is this is the whole thing. All that and more, so let's get to it. Tesla stock is up again in the pre-market, a little over a quarter of a percent. Sitting at 177.38, Tesla has been on a pretty good run. For the week, up almost 6.5%. And year to date, just down a little over 29%. Are we ready to start seeing brighter days ahead for TSLA? Beginning of this year, we've seen Tesla significantly underperform. And now that's starting to be borne out in delivery numbers. Who thinks that this sort of decline is going to be continuing? This idea that Ben uh, Callow at Robert W. Baird, as you mentioned, uh, expects uh, the second quarter to be another decline. Another year over year decline is probably likely. Fully expect Tesla to get back over 400,000. But regardless of what those sales look like, Tesla has so many other aspects of their business that is not just doing well, but flourishing. Given the cyclical nature of autos and we're in one of the more expensive interest rate periods we've seen in a decade, I'm not willing to panic and sell all my Tesla stock just yet. Uh, you know, just looking at, at the chart we have on, on the terminal with, with that story, uh, it does speak to this idea that there will be, uh, you know, at least in his estimation, a bit of a tick up in terms of, you know, just from the seasonally low first quarter. Uh, but to his point, uh, the, the comparison from a year ago is tougher. And I think, you know, as you mentioned, uh, just early this year, you know, the stock was underperforming because we kept hearing analysts after analysts, uh, you know, talk about this idea that the outlook for sales, you know, wasn't that great. And then, you know, lo and behold, the company comes in way below analyst expectations. I think this really uh, sort of leads people to second guess, you know, their assumptions for this company through the rest of, of the year. While they're second guessing, I will be continuing to purchase Tesla stock. My put that expires at the end of the week probably won't make me much money, if any at all. But as we get closer to the end of the week, I'm probably going to place more protective puts. The market is at peak fear when it comes to Tesla. Tesla is still considered expensive to most people on Wall Street. Many have been wanting to talk about this robo-taxi focus versus perhaps the concern of no longer having a model to a cheap car. What do you make of some of the views on the robo-taxi? I think their skepticism is sort of borne out just from the year after year pattern of, of Musk talking about robo-taxis being just around the corner. Uh, you know, I think we're actually coming up on the five-year anniversary of Musk holding the first uh, Tesla Autonomy Day. When I, I remember, you know, covering this with Dana Hull and, and uh, you know, watching Musk talk about this idea that, you know, by the middle of 2020, he was saying that, you know, the million Teslas that were on the road were going to be capable of, of turning into robo taxis and that people would be able to even fall asleep in their car. Obviously, that has not come to pass. And so, you know, the expectation that uh, Tesla is going to be able to, to deliver a fully self-driving vehicle, you know, I, I think Wall Street's going to need to have uh, some show there. That's fair, that's fair. Elon Musk is definitely prone to delays and uh, let's just call it optimism when it comes to innovation that's never been done before. That's fine, that's fine. Wall Street can take all the time it needs to figure out whether or not this is going to come to pass. Forget the fact that five years ago no one thought about artificial intelligence the same way they do now here in 2024, and Elon Musk back then seeing the path that they were on with a little insight, pointing the exact date and time that this technology comes into fruition is harder than pulling a needle out of a haystack. But don't get it twisted. The needle is in there. It's just going to take a little more time to find it. Robo taxis are in focus. Some are attempting a comeback after hitting a rough patch last year. GM is going to resume its robo taxi testing in Phoenix. This is according to a new report here from Bloomberg and coming just days after grounding or coming after grounding its fleet last year. Now, 
Just uh, last week, we saw Tesla's CEO Elon Musk saying that the EV maker is also planning to unveil a driverless taxi in Shana, August. Let's start with that Bloomberg report first, uh, with that report saying the cruise has been in talks with officials from roughly 20 cities to try and resume operations following things being halted last year. We have reached out to GM for confirmation about these tests resuming in Phoenix. Haven't heard back just yet, but a spokesperson from GM telling Bloomberg that they have not set a timeline for deployment and that the company's in the process of meeting with officials in certain markets to gather information. Now, now, Even as Cruise struggles, though, to restart its operations, Waymo, which is, of course, Google's self-driving unit, has really been surging ahead. Google's self-driving unit launching its fully autonomous ride-hailing service in L.A. last month after months of trials. That's in addition to the services they've already been operating in San Francisco and Phoenix. They're now testing its service in Austin and hopes of launching later this year. Just last week, of course, the company launched fully autonomous food deliveries with Uber Eats in Phoenix, part of an ongoing partnership Waymo has with Uber. Now, just to put in context, the growth that we have seen from Waymo between December and February alone, Waymo taxis logged 1.4 million driverless miles. That is a 42% jump from the previous quarter. That's according to data from California Public Utilities Commission. Now, that certainly points to the demand that we have seen in the select markets that Waymo's been operating in. That's a pretty decent amount of miles, but it's nothing compared to what FSD is doing on a daily basis. And look at all that equipment on that vehicle. What's going on here? It looks like a party clown. I gotta agree with Elon here. LiDAR is is lame. The best part is no part. That leads us to where the broader adoption is going. And of course, last week we got that big, <laughs> big announcement from Elon Musk saying that Tesla would be unveiling its robo taxi in August of this year. Now, there's been a lot of questions about just how reliable that technology is going to be coming from Tesla, given what we have seen over the last several months. Elon Musk, of course, has been teasing out the potential of a robo-taxi leading back to 2016, but we did get a, a Tesla uh, recall back in December. Uh, Two million vehicles recalled for a software update after regulators pressured the company and raised questions about just how reliable their autopilot system is, guys. It wasn't recalled because of a software update, it was fixed with a software update. The icons on the dash needed to be bigger? Get the f out of here with that. But the sensationalism of, is a Tesla safe? Is the software going to be safe? Let me tell you what's not safe. 40 plus thousand deaths on US highways alone. Anything, Waymo, Tesla, whoever, anything that brings that number down is a f***ing win. Well, Akiko, speaking of that, we have a result from this lawsuit over the fatal crash involving uh, Tesla's autopilot system. I wonder if you can talk to us a little bit about what the latest is on that. Yeah, this is a settlement of a car crash that happens back in 2018 involving an Apple software engineer who died driving while using Tesla's autopilot system. Now, the family blamed defects in the autopilot technology, saying it didn't have enough safeguards in place to avoid a crash. Now, the terms of the settlement have not been, been made public, but um, certainly any kind of trial for Tesla would have really put this software under scrutiny, public scrutiny, I should say. A crash from 2018 under autopilot. Now, loss of life is terrible no matter how you slice it, but I believe no matter what features are engaged, any accidents are on the onus of the driver, and I use these features every single day. Admittedly, testing the limits of what this thing can and can't do. If I see it's about to do something that is dangerous, I can immediately take over. I'm actually shocked Tesla chose to settle this instead of taking it to court. Tesla will now avoid a months long trial around its self-driving technology just months ahead of its robo-taxi launch, which Musk says is coming on August 8th. In the meantime, Tesla co-founder and former CEO Martin Eberhard told investors at an HSBC summit in Hong Kong overnight that he is amazed, in his words, that Tesla gets away with rolling out autonomous driving given its history of fatal accidents. Absolutely ridiculous. The stock was up about 5% just on the idea 
that RoboCop ta uh, Robo Taxis are coming in August, uh, and that's something that we're going to be talking about right now. A uh, Freudian slip for Optimus with a badge? Pretty big news as far as the market was concerned. The idea of these Robo Taxis actually having a date. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a surprise, but I don't think it was a surprise for investors who are long Tesla stock or certainly sell side analysts who have buy ratings on it. It's about 60 percent of my valuation and has been for over a year is robo taxis or really it's autonomy. Autonomous so that includes problem. FSD to some extent. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it was totally self driving for those uninitiated on the FSD. Right, right, right. Just it's like a level two plus assisted driving. And mm -hmm. then robo taxi is completely level four drives. It drives you completely. Um, <clears throat> the idea that it's coming in August, does that hinge on that valuation, too? Or, or is this something that you could be a little flexible with that timeline? Because that's uh, that's been the knock before, that uh, timelines yeah. are laid out and then not met. If that timeline's not met, do you still think the same thing about your valuation call? Delayed gratification is still gratification. As long as they're able to mature full self-driving to completion, it could happen tomorrow or it could happen in 2028. Either way. It's going to revolutionize the way we get around. No one is even close to coming to a generalized solution. Right now, Tesla could probably put guardrails on this software and have it operate in every major city in America and call it a day. It's not a matter of if anymore, it's only when. Yeah, I do. I mean, my valuation's based on a 2040 year. <laughs> Uh, revenue oh, target wow. and then I discount that back and I apply a multiple there similar to FSD which is like a 2030 2035 mm -hmm. I mean if it's August 8th 2024 if it's next year I mean robo taxis aren't gonna be mainstream for a long while right I, I do see why he's doing it where I mean he's trying to highlight the value of that this could bring it's I mean it's huge right but when do you think it could actually roll out on the streets we have a robo-taxi service in San Francisco with Cruz and Waymo, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be in some big scale anytime soon. Right, but uh, the difference, I mean, the difference, I, I, I'm curious if you agree with this. There is a view among those in the sort of engineering community that the reason why the Waymo um, and Cruz products work is because they use LiDAR right now. I, 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 you roll your eyes, but I'm just saying this is, this is the whole yeah. thing. I think collectively when he said that everybody listening rolled their eyes. LiDAR, by the way, is effectively like a laser that's pointed at different places um, and that gives you feedback about what's actually around you. Elon has decided he wants to do this solely with cameras uh, and without the radar. It's just a completely different approach. And as a result, there are some people who have a view that that is not fully ready for full prime time, you know, uh, full, full self-driving, right. and that's the whole question. And so the, my question to you is, do you believe that the robo-taxi version of the Tesla is running solely on cameras or is somehow is a shift in strategy? I, I could envision him pushing cameras initially. That's what FSD is based on. Could he capitulate on that and pivot towards using LiDAR eventually? Sure. No way. It's not necessary. We currently live in a system where biological robots, humans, use their brain and two eyes, essentially a neural net and two cameras to drive. If you pass this task on to an artificial intelligence that has greater capacity for their neural nets and not two cameras, but eight plus, that's all you really need to get better than a human driving. I, I'm pretty sure we're there right now with vision only. It's only a march of nines for it to get to a level where it's like a hundred times safer than the average human driver. He's changed his mind before on that. Well, that's a, that's a longer <laughs> yeah. delay though, just in terms of getting things out on the street. If you're going yeah, to I mean, it could depend on that. where we have this product. Is it geofenced? What cities? Where is it, you know, initially? But at mass scale, we've heard Mobileye is a company that has uh, a product that's building with VW, the, the ID Buzz, that uses LiDAR. So, I mean, we'll see. It adds a layer of redundancy. Theoretically, it's not 100% necessary. Um, but yeah, it depends. You'll have to re-engineer cities to make this work in the future. 
You can't Real drive. Major cities have. Well, like imagine a robo taxi in the Champs Elysees right now, right? The Arc de Triomphe. It's impossible. So some cities. I mean, they're already doing that in New York, banning uh, private cars in certain streets. You have it on Oxford Street in London, where only certain types of vehicles, uh, some pedestrian areas, are are are, are separated. Cities are going to change dramatically in the next several years or decades. Regulators are going to mandate that we use these things because they save lives. Can't argue with that. People are going to be fearful of the technology. I fully expect there to be some streets and some areas that ban autonomous taxis. But the numbers aren't going to lie. And regulators are going to want people to use this technology, especially if it's saving lives. Grand scale, is it going to be safer eventually? Probably, you have people who cause accidents all the time, but the liability factor is a huge one that is going to weigh on the manufacturers of all these cars. Sure, and that's, that's, become, that's been the real overhang of the difficulty. BMW always says the moment uh, there's a headline that says BMW kills human, we're finished, right? But the reality is this saves, literally it'll save two million lives a year. Right, 100 the million, of being yeah. the one that kills sure. somebody. I mean, it's, it, there's still the legal framework you have to live within and the outrage of the family that loses someone. But what about the outrage of the <laughs> two other million people who die, right? So, well, But let me ask you this. I've asked Elon yeah. this, this question specifically right. and personally, which is what is the politically palatable number in your mind in America of people who are going to die because the computer effectively is going to malfunction? That is actually the fundamental question. So right now, if you believe that 35, 40,000 people die in a vehicle every single year in America, if I told you that 5,000 people were going to die every year in America, but, it was, but a computer was going to do it because it malfunctioned, would you say that's, that's a good outcome? Would you say that's acceptable to you? I don't know. That's why I'm saying I, it, it's not so clear. If you got the number from 30 or 20, I don't think that would be politically palatable. Right. So if you got it from 30 to 200, that might be politically palatable. What? What are, what are we talking about? Any drop in that number should be palatable. The only thing that I wouldn't accept is a lateral move. You know, the same number of people are dying due to the computer malfunction. Humans are malfunctioning multiple times on a daily basis. This is unacceptable. We know that 94% of, of, of accidents are caused by human error, right? So that number won't go from 30 to 5,000. It'll be a lot smaller. We have to remember other industries that's happened. Aviation, there were tons of crashes early on. Trains. In conclusion. While many analysts brace for Tesla sales number to continue to decline year over year, driverless taxis have been in the news quite a bit. GM to resume testing. Maybe they'll be able to find a pilot city that'll let them operate again. Waymo is continuing to expand operations. And the black swan of the group that doesn't use LiDAR. As a matter of fact, how the hell are they getting around without it? Tesla plans to unveil their robo taxi on August 8th. Skepticism is high and the street is probably not going to be able to recognize this by the time Tesla stock takes off. I for one will continue to buy Tesla stock when it becomes painfully obvious that Tesla has cornered the market on not only EVs, but driverless taxis. That's all I got for you today. Be easy. Hey.